Okay, hello, good morning, uh, everyone. Thank you so much for um, joining us this morning. Welcome to uh, the Astro Awani Link webinar entitled Marketing Insider Borneo Edition with me, Dino Omar, and it gives me great pleasure uh, to be your host for this morning. Um, we are super excited to be talking about what we will be talking about today. If you strip down what we are trying to achieve today, it is simply to understand the exoticism and the wonderful opportunities available from the land of um, East Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak. You know, if you're talking about Sabah and Sarawak, this is a land that is colorful. It's got wonderful opportunities. The people are warm and friendly and they come in a myriad of shapes and sizes uh, and I'm talking about culturally here. We're talking about languages here. We're talking about understanding the psyche because there's so much that we can gain from understanding the uh, way the people of Sabah and Sarawak think and especially how this is going to play well if you're looking at um, setting up or expanding your business from wherever it could be uh, you're expanding from um, West Malaysia or if you could be um, expanding from either regions of um, Sabah or Sarawak or even if you're coming from outside um, Malaysia itself, there's a lot of um, opportunities uh, there to be gained. Uh, so we will be tackling all that later today. Um, we are talking about a region that has a lot of movement. We are talking about a region where in 2019, as, as late as 2019, big companies of the world, such as IKEA, is thinking of um, going into the region, but also at the same time, a region where as early as February of this year, we've got companies exiting such as Giant. So there's a lot of movement happening in Sabah and Sarawak. So we want to understand what does it take uh, for businesses uh, to have a good and strong foothold within the region itself. I mean, we're talking about a region that has a population that makes up about 20% of the population of Malaysia. So there's a sizable market over there. So we want to help you understand not only what it takes to get into the minds of East Malaysians, but also, you know, what are the things that one should be looking out for uh, in creating a good image and a good um, uh, a tonality for your business in the region of East Malaysia. So we've got all that happening uh, later on today. But just to give you a little bit of a, a taste of what we'll be um, discussing today, uh, check this video out uh, by um, uh, call Eight Cultural Insights um, of East Malaysia. Take it away. Hello and welcome to Malaysia's best kept secret, Sabah and Sarawak. In 2019, Sabah's population rose to 3.9 million and Sarawak 2.8 million, which makes up to 21% of Malaysia's total population. If you've met a Sarawakian or Sabahan before, I'm sure you've been confused to what race we are and that's because there are over 70 sub-ethnicities in both states combined but we identify as Sabahan or Sarawakian. Intercultural marriage is very common in these parts. Just take a look at some of my friends. Pretty good looking bunch, eh? We are also known to be quite the life of the party which comes natural because we have some of the biggest festivals in Malaysia like the Rainforest World Music Festival aka RWMF and KK Jazz Festival to name a few. Even some of Malaysia's famous talent are from East Malaysia like Stacy, Andy Mernadi, Zizi Kirana, The Click, Ziavi and believe it or not, Henry Golding! Now to one of Sabah and Sarawak's best kept secret Kaamatan and Gawai Festival, which is only celebrated in Sabah and Sarawak. Beauty pageants, parades, traditional dance performance take center stage during this month-long celebration. So, apa tunggugi? Kame kame lai liao. Now, one of the common jokes about Sabah and Sarawak is that we still live in trees and use crocodile as transportation. <laughs> I mean, how cool would that be, right? But sorry to disappoint you because most homes in East Malaysia have more than one car at any given time with a popular option being four-wheel drives. I mean, why not, right? Since road tax are cheaper for all vehicles, which makes sense because all that money saved from the toll can be used to buy buying a new car. And I'm also here to set the record straight because I've been hearing a lot of confusion when it comes to who has the best food. Well, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Sarawak la. Why you ask? For starters, we have the Kuching Food Festival which lasts for a month and has over 300 stalls and 300,000 visitors far and wide come to experience this. 
And do we have any seafood fans in the house? Well, Sabah has one of the freshest seafood in the world. Fun fact, East Malaysia is the only state that has our own e-wallet. Sabah and Sarawak Pay. Yep, we're innovative like that. We are also known to be quite the shopaholics because Sabah and Sarawak are the biggest markets for online shopping platforms like Zalora and Shopee. But if education is your priority, East Malaysia provides Australian education in Swinburne University and Curtin University, which attracts many international students. Now, Astro Radio is the only national radio operating in East Malaysia. As you can see, we have a strong presence within the community and we are also operating at almost 100% in terms of localization. We know what the people want and we give it to them. Our content are carefully created and localized to fit the demographic in Sabah and Sarawak. Now, I've just shared with you everything you need to know about Sabah and Sarawak. The rest is up to you. You can get more details by contacting Mohidin at mohidin underscore kadir at astro.com.my or make your way to quake.com.my. Nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity. Well, there you have it. A little bit of... um. An introduction to Sabah and Sarawak, and as you can see, there's a lot that you can uh, gain from the region. And I'm talking about multiple industries and multiple facets of the community itself. Um, this is a region that has a huge um, ethnic uh, makeup. It is a region that offers a lot in terms of cuisine, in terms of culture, in terms of interest. And I believe it is safe for me to say that this is a region where a one-size-fits-all strategy may not quite be the best type of strategy out there. So we want to help you understand, okay, so if we're talking about the people uh, near the, um, the northern tip of the, uh, of the island, um, closer to the, uh, uh, the, the, the mountaintops of uh, Mount Kinabalu, all the way down uh, to uh, Kuching, uh, and all the communities that, that basically coexist between these two points. Um, what are the marketing messages that you should be looking out for and how you should be ma- um, crafting your marketing message for that? So in order to help me uh, cool past this topic a little bit more, um, I have with me uh, four um, presenters, co-presenters that will be bringing four very different uh, perspectives for very different angles uh, for you to understand how you can localize your product marketing and win over East Malaysians. So if I could just invite uh, my fellow presenters to uh, go ahead and turn your cameras as I introduce you. Um, first up, we have uh, Mr. Hafiz Zudin Nizamuddin, or Hafiz for short. Uh, he is the GM of Astro Radio East Malaysia. He's in charge of uh, your favorite radio brands such as Era Sabah and Era Sarawak. So Hafiz, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, next up, we also have uh, Mr. Dexter Ye, who is the marketing manager of Daily Express, the independent newspaper of Sabah. Uh, Dexter, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, next, we have Mr. Nizam Sani, who is the chief marketing and communications officer of Bank Rakyat. Now, the only uh, fellow presenter who is coming to you uh, from here in Semenanjung, where I am right now, because everybody else is joining us uh, from East Malaysia. Nizam, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And uh, my last speaker today is Mr. Suhaimi Sulaiman, the CEO of the Sarawak Media Group, my top guru, who needs no further introduction, uh, as he is a very well-known media pr- practitioner here in the country. Check me, thank you so much for joining us. Just to double check, just to make sure that everybody has got, yes, the camera's on. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so before we go any further, check me. Uh, there is a special video that you want to share with us. So if I could just ask my, my uh, fellow colleagues to go ahead and roll this video uh, and we can understand a little bit more about what Chick Me does for us um, here uh, in TVS.
Well, there you go. A little bit about TVS uh, and the good work that Swami Slawan uh, is doing uh, over at the uh, Sarawak Media Group. Okay, gentlemen. Once again, uh, it's great to have all of you here. So I'm going to start off our session today, and I know that everybody here is going to be bringing very, very different perspectives uh, to what we are going to be talking about here, which is really to understand uh, the people of Borneo, uh, the people of um, Sabah and Sarawak. So I want to start off with a very, very generic question, which I believe is going to paint a picture for us uh, where you are coming from when we are talking about uh, East Malaysia. I would like to ask the panelists, uh, what excites you the most? when we're talking about or marketing to East Malaysians. So if I'm looking at my screen right now, the edges to me is Hafiz. So Hafiz, if you could take this question first, please go ahead. Uh, the one thing that really excites me when it comes to this, uh, actually the people. It's just so different. And like you said earlier on, uh, you, you cannot do a one size fit all approach. Okay, Whether it's marketing or whether it's um, making friends with them, it's, it's all so, so different. So for me, uh, people is, is key in this. Thank you, Hafiz. Dexter, over to you. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, Hi. Greetings from Sabah, the land below the wind. <laughs> uh, what excites me, basically, um, is that the pandemic has been very troublesome and a lot of businesses have been closing. But where there is failure and bankruptcies, there's also opportunity, in which I believe that a lot of West Malaysian companies should really come into Sabah and see that there is plenty of opportunity here, especially since Sabahans cannot travel to KL anymore. A lot of rich Sabahans actually fly to KL to spend their money. And the pandemic forces West Malaysians to actually come back here to spend on their marketing campaigns and to engage with locals since we have nowhere else to go. Thank you. Yeah, I completely agree that the, the amount of, um, uh, if I could use this word, opulence that I see in Sabah whenever I head over there, it's amazing. I remember um, about half a decade ago when I was still doing um, my motoring show, the Rolls-Royce Wraith was introduced in Malaysia and the very first unit that I saw was on the streets of KK and it left me dumbfounded. So I was thinking, hmm, this is a region that is super different because it may seem like um, one thing, but then when you actually head over there and you understand the, the society a little bit more, especially if you're looking at property prices, we're talking about a different market altogether over here. What do you think about this, Nisan? What excites you the most about, about talking about East Malaysians? Hey, Dino, thanks. Um, I think, you know, I, um, like what Hafiz said, there's not one size that fits all. I think um, localizing uh, products or services uh, from the bank point of view um, is something that we, we take on uh, daily in our work. I think um, also being able to serve the unserved and underserved market as far as banking products are concerned uh, is something that we look forward to. Um, also the initiatives that we do to help people the, 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 the B40s in, in, in Sabah and Sarawak as well. So um, we'll be sharing some of the stuff that we've done to, to help people. I think um, the name Bank Rakyat, which is the bank for the people, um, we have set out to, to, to assist in uh, as many ways as we can. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. I'm going to come back to you a bit later when, um, when we, we talk a little bit deeper and understand a little bit more about what you just said just now about uh, an underserved segment of the market. So we want to understand is there a difference between what you define as underserved in West Malaysia versus East Malaysia and how do you address it? Uh, last but definitely not least, uh, so Mr. Lehman, check me. Uh, your thoughts, please, on what excites you the most about East Malaysia. And I know that you are somebody who takes culture in uh, and, and, and embrace it. So uh, I'm looking forward to hear what you have to say, Chekmi. Okay, in, in order for us to understand the market, yeah, okay, let me just tell you what um, uh, this is basically my experience after being in Kuching for the last 11 months. Yeah, it's all about representation and if you are relatable. Yeah, so who are these people who are actually watching TVS? Yeah, uh, but before that, I just want to share some numbers because I guess uh, the audience would want to know hey, for a very young station, how many people are actually watching you? The number is actually actually good. In December, we have 2.4 uh, unique viewers and it grew to 5.5 in February. And as of last month, we got 6.7 million people watching us. Now, if the population of Sarawak is 2.9, uh, this is as, as is this morning, yeah, 
then meaning uh, it's just not being viewed in Sarawak, but also in many other parts of uh, Peninsular Malaysia. Now, who are these people and why are they happy watching us? Let me just give you a little bit of uh, background on who these people are. Okay, This is based on, uh, of course, it's not random sample, uh, but, but based on our conversation and based on the feedback that we've received. Yeah, Why they like us? Because their aspiration, let's understand the frame of reference of uh, the audience. Number one, they want to be global players. Yeah, they want to be global players uh, and they want their kids to be global players. So um, they, they want to be updated on international issues and uh, they, uh, they, want how, they want us to basically uh, um, break the parts and make it relevant locally. They embrace the latest technology. Yeah, they're very hip here in Sarawak. They are into digital economy. Now with the lockdowns, everyone is buying online. So they embrace that. They want modern agriculture. They are very digital savvy. They care about the environment and they celebrate great ideas. And they look up to locals who have made it big internationally because they are global players. Yeah, they are global players. They love Pandalela Renong and of course, Henry Golding. They celebrate Dewi Sriesta, uh, the, the great singer who won the talent competition at Miss World. And also they celebrate Francisca Luhong James. Now this is basically how people in Sarawak, our main audience are actually looking at the brand. Now, if your brand can align with that brand, and I think uh, this is good uh, where we can actually collaborate. And other than that, just one more thing before we go to the second round, it's also about respect, yeah? Respecting the traditions, the culture and heritage. Now, recently during Gawai, and before that during Hari Raya, uh, all our anchors uh, uh, for Hari Raya, they wore the Keringka, which is very, very Sarawakian, yeah? And then, Never before. Before this, as an anchor, I was told many, many times yeah, by people who have been long in the industry, when you go to on television, you have to be very simple, you know, uh, so that you don't distract the attention from the, uh, from the message that you're giving. But during Gawai, we wore our massive headgears with feathers and everything. Mm -hmm. And the kind of feedback that we've got is people love it because they say, this is differentiation, uh, inspiring. So that is the brand. Now, if your brand, uh, people who are watching this, uh, 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 this webinar, if your brand celebrates that, and I, th I think we can actually collaborate. Wow, so long. Huh? Okay, take over. <laughs> if I take over the show. No, 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 it's Jamie. Uh, very, very good insight. So, you know, that, that's a great lead into um, what I want to talk about um, in the second part of here, which is really to understand your audience. And Jamie has mentioned something that is uh, very, very relevant, which is representation. Now, I know that it is, whilst it is a given, but sometimes it may not be as apparent to people who are thinking of venturing into the area to ensure that representation is there to ensure that when we are speaking to Sabahans and Sarawakians, we are representing the very communities that, and, and the very societies that we are trying to speak to. However, uh, I see a, a, a small problem over here because when we want to talk about representation, where in West Malaysia, perhaps, and this is not rightly done so as well, we simplify, we oversimplify the representation into the major groups over here, which is, you know, the Chinese, the Malays, the Indians, for example, okay? And it is an oversimplified representation. But when we are considering the regions of Sabah and Sarawak, where the larger makeup of the community is made up of the different ethnicities, how do we ensure that representation, and this is about in the, in the spirit of knowing your audience here, how do we ensure that in the spirit of representation, we are not missing anybody out? Because it is a huge geographical location that offers so many different things. So check me, perhaps you wanna start off uh, this conversation about understanding and knowing your audience first when you're talking about representation there. You're muted, check me. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Lupa. So when, when, when you talk about representation, it's always, okay, I, I can relate to this because uh, before this, I was based in KL uh, most of my life. Okay. I only moved to Kuching uh, in uh, um, August last year. Now, what I learned, you know, sometimes uh, people in uh, Semenanjung, uh, in the peninsula, they take things for granted. For example, when you watch television, yeah, when you watch television, you see different, different programs. Well, my parents uh, basically at home, my late uh, father and mother, they spoke in uh, the, uh, they spoke English and also uh, Malay in the Negeri Sembilan dialect. Yeah. So whenever uh, somebody speaks a Negeri Sembilan dialect, for example, if Hatan, the entertainer, speaks with a, uh, with a Negeri Sembilan dialect, oh, oh, then I will, oh, I can actually relate to that. 
Yeah, the same thing with when uh, Sabah Yunus, uh, the comedian, uh, spoke in uh, the Kelantanese dialect. Yeah, now there is uh, that attraction. Yeah, so what we did here, uh, what we have been doing, in fact, in, in TVS, most of our programs, yeah, uh, we have programs in, in the Iban language, yeah, uh, uh, in Bidayu, yeah, and of course, uh, some uh, it's very difficult for people in Semenanjung to understand. We provide subtitles because we always believe in you have to be true to your core audiences. It's the same thing like when we watch Korean movies. Why do you watch Korean movies? Because the story is set in Seoul, but it's relatable internationally. That's what we do. Uh, and, and I think you have to be honest to your main, to the core uh, of your audience. Now, if you as a brand would want to come in and push your products and services based on one size fits all that you mentioned earlier, I don't think it's going to work at all. Yeah, because people can relate to someone who looks like you, who sounds like you, and that is what we practice. For example, I give you an example. Some of the programs that uh, we have repeated the programs more than five times. In fact, uh, on our channel, it's called Rezeki Ai. You know, I don't understand a single word that this uh, the, the, the person who told the story, but I read the subtitle and the story was just so compelling. And and, and that's the feedback that we have got, not just from Sarawak, but from the viewers in the peninsula. They say, we love this. And for a TV station like us, that's how we have, uh, that's our strategy to win. If I were to compete with the Media Prima Boys or the RTM with that formula, I will lose, yeah, because we are young and new. So if you come up with a differentiation and people celebrate that and you are true, you are inspiring in that sense and all inspiring brands, yeah, I think hundreds of you watching at the moment, if your brand is inspiring and if your brand celebrates culture, celebrates heritage and your uh, frame of reference is basically international, we are a global player, I think we can actually work together. So this is how you send the message to the uh, audience basically and they align with that value. So it's about celebrating what we have, our differentiation. That's the most important. Dexter, so uh, very quickly, let's go straight to Dexter. So scenario in Sabah, um, probably a little bit more condensed because it's not as big as Sarawak, but then I would understand that, you know, the complexities are similar. What, are your, what is your take on this? Yes, uh, well, when it comes to, you know, Sabah and Sarawak, actually, it's a huge difference, you know. East Malaysia is truly unique, you know, and that, we even when it comes to West and East Malaysia, actually Sabah and Sarawak itself is very different. You know, our ethnic tribes, um, for instance, you know, in Sarawak, there's the Iban, there's the Dayak, but for Sabah, there's the Karazans and the Dusuns. It's totally different market, you know. So this is where West Malaysian companies really have to understand. It's that you cannot target East Malaysia as one. You should really engage with um, Sabah people, to tell stories suitable for Sabah audience and same for Sarawak as well because of the cultural differences, you know, and our practices, even the types of food we eat is totally different. Ask anyone, you know, they will tell you that it's definitely not the same. Um, okay, so Nizam, um, so you're coming from the other side of the coin over here. So these are, we're talking about people who is creating the content for that, but then uh, you are representing a company, uh, a bank that, like you mentioned earlier, is the People's Bank. We're talking about a huge group of different people over here. And one thing that I want to uh, bring forward here, and I guess we are already rolling in, um, you know, identifying sinkholes that, that, that are already prevalent over there. Um, you see, um, one thing that we can uh, probably all relate to is the fact that a lot of Malaysian companies like to sell on nostalgia. The good example would be if you look at Iklan Raya or, you know, Chinese New Year Iklan or Merdeka. Merdeka would be a really good one. We really like to sell on nostalgia. But you see, the nostalgia signifiers within different communities have different memories that they play out from. So how does a bank like Bank Rakyat deal with this? Okay, I think, uh, firstly, what, what we do have in East Malaysia is that I think we've got the distribution of branches um, at all the major towns and cities. So I think Saban Sarawak, we have 27 full branches as well as five Raya Access, which are smaller branches. Now, what's key here is to, to note is that uh, we are represented by um, locals as branch managers to represent because like uh, Chit Mija we, we are looking at a very big uh, language barrier, you know? So to have local um, branch managers and local staff 
addressing the customers in the local language would go far for one. I think that's number one. Um, number two, I think um, as far as the services that we have, um, looking at how we are distributed, uh, where the branches are, as well as the smaller branches are. Also, we've launched a new service in, in, in Sarawak, uh, which we call uh, our Bank Bergara Arrow, uh, for us to go and get ourselves into areas which, like I mentioned Teddy earlier, um, underserved uh, areas. So language is one. Even, even when we do our, our radio ads, for example, it is all in local languages. I think Hafiz uh, you know, can, can, can confirm that. Um, but I think moving away slightly, talking about this representation thing, um, maybe we, we, we look at TV programs, how, how TV programs are done, especially the signature shows, AF, whether you talk about Rajalawa. Um, auditions are always, always held in Sabah and Sarawak. I mean, there's 6 million plus viewers. I mean, uh, and our population is about 6 million plus. Um, viewers probably three times that. So having um, contestants, from Sabah and Sarawak, even though they're more costly, makes a lot more sense for, for people like Astro or TV3 who are doing um, all these signature shows. So have, having that representation goes, goes a very, very long way, even for TV. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned, you know, uh, for example, a show like um, uh, AF and all that. Um, but we're talking about uh, language difference here, right? Yeah. That, that is what you mentioned just now. Um, it's probably easier if you're doing it from a localized um, scenario. But then if you're talking about mass media and creating a larger marketing message, it might be a little bit more difficult than that. So we want to understand um, you know, about that in a bit. But Hafiz, um, so you're a prime example of you know, being in the business of playing around with language because you represent Astro Radio in East Malaysia. Um, You've got three brands over there. If, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You've got Hits, you've got um, uh, Era, and you've got My. Now, Hits correct. and My, I will discount a little bit. Lah. Even though, yes, there will be key differences, but then the medium of um, uh, the medium uh, language is uh, either in English or in Mandarin, where you will have the same kind of, different kind of pronunciation, maybe, uh, of English words and Mandarin words, but then, generally speaking, it is the same language. But Era... We've got ERA here in Semenanjung, you've got ERA in Kuching, and you've got ERA in Kota Kinabalu. The same product presented in three different languages. Take us through the psyche of why is there a need for us to have three different variants of the same product here. Okay, like what Dexter said earlier on, right? East Malaysia versus West are totally different. But when you compare between Sabah and Sarawak, it's also different. You can't do a East Malaysia umbrella campaign. You have to treat Sabah and Sarawak differently. Hence, we have Era Sabah and we have Era Sarawak. Okay, because of the lingo, because of the slang, the twang that they use is different. The content that we, we showcase is also different. Okay, language-wise, you know, some words that we use, okay, if you use it back in Semenanjung, habis lah kita punya license, right? For instance, your, your buttocks, your backside, Okay, in back in Semenanjung, you call it punggung, right? Uh, very, very soft, uh, polite way of mentioning it. Here in Kuching, they call it buhit. Yeah, and, and that, that, that's a decent language, so that's a decent word. Your fathers and your uncles, auntie will use the same word. And in back in Sabah, okay, your punggung or your buhit in Sarawak is called pantat. And we are allowed to mention all that. <laughs> okay, and the reason why, uh, why we have it so separate, right? Because like era, okay, I want to go back to the representation, right? Assumption, okay, in terms of race and religion. Melayu, uh, India, China, dan lain-lain. That's the, your typical thinking of how uh, we, we, we make up to the entire population. But back in East Malaysia, here, okay, the Malays, the Muslims are not the majority. Yeah? they make up to only 40% of the entire population in Sabah and Sarawak. The rest, mainly are Christians or, 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 or Catholics. Okay? You, go, you go to the streets of Sabah, you, are, you will see more churches, you will see more chapels than you see the surahs and the mosques. Okay? And, and, and going back to our station, okay, what we do, we, even sell, we, have to, we have to celebrate Christmas. We play Christmas songs. On, on, on era Sabah and era Sarawak. Mm -hmm. We play Gawai Dayak songs for sure because it's also a two days public holiday, uh, bearing in mind. 
And us marketers or uh, back in Sinanjung, are we doing enough to, to acknowledge that or not? It is as big or even bigger than your Hari Raya Chinese New Year celebration. Yeah, I, I, I have to show this slide to you. Uh, um, just one slide, two pictures. I want to share with the audience. Hang on for a second. Okay, I'll go back later. Now it's missing. Pula. Later, I'll show you. I'll show you. Technology does yeah? that most of the time, can Yeah. <laughs> one. Uh, In the meantime, I just want to remind the uh, our yeah, Okay, I found uh, it. I just I want to remind our attendees, if you have any questions, yeah. you can go ahead. I can see that there are some questions coming in already via the Q&A uh, function. So yes, you can do that, but you can also just go ahead and write your questions in the chat room um, and make sure that uh, it is available to be viewed uh, by panelists and attendees so that, you know, in case um, we're talking and then uh, one of the uh, panelists uh, sees a question and wants to answer that in the chat room, then that person can uh, do so immediately. So please go ahead and bombard us with your questions. We want to help you understand what it takes uh, to speak to East Malaysians. Okay, back to you, Hafiz Hussain. Okay, I'll share now. Can you see it? Uh, yep. Okay. These are actual billboards in Sabah. One in Tamparuli, one I think somewhere uh, somewhere on the way to Rana. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dexter. You can confirm this, right? And these are the things that you can see in Sabah. Okay, a Merry Christmas, a cross, you know, mentioning Jesus. You want to do that in KL? You can't. <laughs> okay, and this is how different and what the, the, the things that we can do in, 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 in this region. It's so amazing. And, and again, right, we take it for granted. There are a lot of rules that we can break here, you know, compared to, the, to, to back in West Malaysia. That's all. Thank you. So, okay, so if you are talking about that, right, if you, if you are talking about the fact that the, the, the memories are so different and, and uh, the, what calls out to the communities and the societies are very different in nature, talking from one community to another, um, and we've already established that a one-size-fits-all strategy does not work in this case. So is there a place for mass media such as Astro, such as TVS, such as Daily Express, in this case over here, um, where we cannot help but to think that, you know, when we are creating um, content for the mass, um, over here, like I mentioned, it's oversimplified, where we're talking about the three main race groups, but in Sabah and Sarawak, it is very, very, very different. So again, I want to go back to Suhaimi and also to Dexter. Um, when we create content, when we create messages for the various um, groups of communities in Sabah and Sarawak, how do we ensure that, you know, yes, it's good that you're creating these messages for specific groups, but then the other groups do not feel left out. Subtitle is one quick solution. What else? Okay, do you know? I, can I take your uh, your question? Go, go on, go on. Okay, and I, I also want to answer to Encik Muhammad, uh, Encik Amin. Encik Amin asked me, uh, you, when you talk about uh, the differentiation, you tell me, I know why the lingua franca in TVS is Bahasa Malaysia and not Bahasa Sarawak. Okay, let me tell you this. Um, if you if you watch uh, morning sampai malam, okay, uh, you will see on our uh, channel, we have news in Bahasa, we have news in Iban, in Mandarin, and also in English. And some of our progress, not all are in Bahasa Malaysia. Because you have to remember, earlier on I mentioned that uh, our unique viewers uh, is basically 6.7 million. Yeah? We have people viewing us in Sarawak, we also have people viewing us in Peninsula Malaysia. Now, to satisfy the different different uh, niche, the different different markets, the different different audience, we have uh, uh, programs where people can actually make appointments to see them uh, on television and also if they miss that they can always go online okay now contohnya for example we have Pangau Kitai in Iban and our cooking show uh, uh, Nang Nyaman uh, is basically uh, in Bahasa Melayu Sarawak and then Borak Tesiping is in Bahasa Melayu Sarawak and uh, of course we have Mandarin News and even our tele movies yeah the, uh, which is being produced for example Puasa Oce Oce is in Melayu Sarawak and also uh, uh, Sahri Selum Raya is in Melayu Sarawak. So we uh, make sure that, okay, uh, we, we look at the data that we have. Okay, how many people are Melayu, Bumi Putra, Sarawak? So we, we cater to their needs. And how many people are actually viewing us from Semenanjung? Okay, uh, how many percent, for example, um, 
uh, one of the highest rated programs uh, on TVS is basically programs in Iban. Yeah. So because we know that's, that that's a target market and they are very, very loyal. So they watch. So we present the programs in Iban. So, and we also have a program, a very interesting program called Klaka Sawat Jo uh, uh, by Fatah uh, uh, Bolhanuddin. It's basically uh, uh, teaching people how to speak in the Melayu Sarawak. So we have all that. So it's not just uh, in Bahasa. So we have all kinds because you need to appeal to the different, different market segments. For example, if you are of a certain race, uh, if you speak a certain culture, a certain language, and I think the most that you can watch for television is four hours, like, unless you have not, nothing better to do in your life, you know, <laughs> or you're a gone case. Yeah? So you watch for four hours. So within that four hours, you will have enough progress that would appeal to you uh, in, in the language that you like. And then you can move on to other languages. So it's not just Bahasa Melayu standard. It's in all languages because we know uh, the different different audience because based on data that we have, uh, who are actually watching us. Uh, for example, uh, there are certain programs that we conduct in English because uh, twenty nine percent of our audience are actually PMEBs, and which is I think a good thing for us. So they need some cerebral content. So you market in English. So brands that can relate to that kind of audience can come in. So it's everything that you. So my so Jamie, my question therefore now is, yeah. how do we how do we choose which of the slices of community gets the prime time? Okay, uh, 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 this is one thing good about when you're a 24-7 channel, okay? To me, prime time is no longer uh, between 6 or 7 o'clock until 11. No, you know, uh, especially now when you work from home, okay? This is actually good, okay? This is actually good <laughs> for us. Uh, you have a captured audience there. So you basically, uh, it's based on your scheduling. So you have, uh, uh, let's say a program, let's say a program uh, in Iban, yeah? So uh, you have uh, right after the news, which is at 8.30, you have one at 11 o'clock the next day. So over one week, they have, they'll leave repeat slots that, uh, it's, I, I wouldn't say repeat, but it's basically appointment for you to actually watch. As I, and, and if you miss it, you can always go to online. So I think that's basically how it's, it's no longer... Uh, don't talk about prime time. Prime time is 24-7, do you know? Come on. <laughs> so that means you create the prime time within yes, those particular groups time. itself. Exactly. Nizam, Nizam, you want to share something, Nizam? Go ahead, Nizam. No, actually, I think you stole the question out of my mouth. Um, Chitmi, <laughs> I mean, Chitmi has done programming both for TV um, in Semenanjung as well as in now in Sarawak. Um, is there a particular uh, difference uh, as far as time belts are concerned with your fresh content? That's, that's why I just wanted to ask that. Okay, uh, good question. <laughs> you can never leave TV. Eh? Uh, <laughs> even if you work, well, uh, he used to work for TV before. Now, um, uh, when we trace the data, yeah, uh, you can slot it at any time that you like. So you, you have to understand the audience, okay? Let's say the audience work uh, nine to five, so they will not have access to television. But then again, uh, there's also Astro on the go. You know, you can, during your lunch break, you can go. So when you uh, schedule, you have to schedule it intelligently. Yeah, you can actually reach the markets. Okay, if they're working, if the premiere is at two o'clock in the afternoon, the premiere may not have the best viewership. But then later on, when they go back home, they can actually watch it or maybe on a weekend, you can, they, they can do beach watching. So scheduling and uh, putting a, a premiere for a product See, it's very, very flexible and um, uh, it's accessible everywhere now. So you're in uh, the online platform. So it's so easy. And if you miss everything, you can always go to tvstv.my. I'm plugging in tvstv.my, tvstv.my. <laughs> Remember the brand, okay? <laughs> no worries, no worries. So that means, okay, so now going back to uh, Hafiz uh, and also Dexter. So, okay, looking at what Swahimi has already explained earlier, right? Are we, are we saying then that um, the consumption pattern, the consumer behavior is sort of like being forced to go back to um, back in the 80s when, you know, if you remember before the advent of um, satellite television and, and, and cable TV in Malaysia, where everybody was watching RTM and RTM as a platform needed to um, provide and to address different segments of our communities. So they are forced to you know, ensure that the programming itself represents everybody. Um, is this the case that we're talking about here? Maybe Hafiz first, and then we can go to Dexter.
Okay. Um, well, apart from radio, we address all audiences. And also, we also have our digital platform that's a bit more targeted, okay, depending on the campaigns, we can tailor make it and we can also target it to uh, different, different uh, ethnic, ethnicities. So I think um, what we're doing here is um, quite holistic in terms of mm. how uh, our messaging is for our audience and consumers. Holistic, okay. Dexter, what's your take on this? Okay. Um, I just want to touch upon just now what you mentioned um, about the churches and everything, how Sabah is different. One very good example here in KK, actually, there's a street where the mosque, the church, and a Buddhist temple is all side by side. So these are the, some of the only things you can only find in Sabah. You know, um, moving on, I think another good example is actually Bank Rakyat. Bank Rakyat approached us uh, before the pandemic, actually, to reach out to the Karazan audience. And we are the only paper in Sabah which has a Karazan section for the Karazan readers in Karazan Dusun language. Language. So I think this is a very good example as well of how to specifically target certain audiences. I'm, I'm okay, understood. Um, now let's go into hi um, hyper-localization because I know Chek uh, and also uh, Nizam was also mentioning just now about how you should be localization, uh, localizing your content and localizing your messages. Uh, my first question would be, okay, we understand that you are supposed to be localizing, but you're supposed to go even further and hyper-localize your message if you want to speak to specific groups of people. How does one do that? Nizam, can I start off with you? I think... Um exactly like what Dexter mentioned. When we look at our audience, our potential customers, I think um, what we have done over the last uh, four or five years is to look at each and every segment, each and every ethnic, ethnic differently. Um, so if we're talking Kadazan we, you know, in, in, in Dexter's newspaper, we put it in certain segments. When we talk uh, to, to customers on radio, on our campaigns and stuff, um, even the language that we use on era Sabah, era Sarawak, is all tailor-made um, for, 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 for the segments that we're looking at. Um, I think, um, yeah, I mean, while, while, we, while we do all this, it's also very important to understand that um, these guys have a, a very, very strong loyalty uh, satu towards the brands they use, you know. So um, that's why when we localize, is how we touch people from uh, from the young of you know age groups. When we talk about age groups, all the way up from kids from from the time they're in school when they go to university as well as they start working. So that's why when we when we when we make our products, um, our services, and we have on ground stuff previously, um, we look at these people uh, separately. So for example, in certain schools in 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 Sabah. We, we, we start sustainable farms uh, so that these farms can actually come out there and assist the, 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 the B40 kids. So each and every farm that we have done is localized to certain areas. Um, also, some of the assistance that we've come out with during Banjir, Sarawak Banjir, we assist in, in, in Sarawak. So that's why I check out that when, when, we are, when we are seen as the bank for the people, it is also to tap on that loyalty um, somewhat, maybe you, you talk about hyper, you know, um, it is somewhat to that extent. So that's why we, we go further, not only looking at the language, we also look at how we help the community because in return, that loyalty will benefit us. Okay, Faham. But my concern now is, and um, open to any of the panelists that are representing um, media houses, my concern now is, if you have to really hyper-localize your messaging to ensure that when you speak to a particular community, it is going to be talking to that community effectively, if you are going to do that, isn't that going to burst your advertising budget? Isn't that going to throw your marketing budget uh, through the roof? Because you have to create so many different versions of your marketing message to ensure that nobody is being left out. How do we do this? Jamie, maybe you want to take this, Jamie? Okay, uh, but before that, uh, I just want to um, uh, answer one question. Uh, Amin, he has a follow-up question. Uh, he, mm. he mentioned that you know, if, you, if you try to appease everyone, you know, then uh, a bit of everything, then uh, you'll be the jack of all trades, master of none. But I, I, I always believe in you can be the jack of all trades, master of all, because uh, it's based on compelling content. Now, earlier on uh, in your question, you mentioned that um, 
okay, uh, how uh, you would burst your advertising budget because you have to do uh, 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 different uh, versions, customize yeah, different different versions. But I I think okay, I think you don't have to do uh, every single thing. Just pick a little bit in there. Okay, and uh, I, I have to because sometimes people ask me this question: uh, when you when you do hyper local, what exactly you mean by hyper local? Uh, I always believe in yes, it's local. Okay, people who look and sound like you, but the idea must be very global. Uh, I give you an example. Recently, we showed a tele movie, uh, which is uh, a, a very successful tele movie produced by a local production house called Puasa Oce Oce. Yeah. Now, inside the story, yeah, inside the story. Uh, there's also a hawker uh, who's actually very influenced by the Korean culture, where he says sarangi, you know, uh, with the <laughs> blonde hair and all that. Yeah, uh, Ardin Balarik, yeah, very famous personality here in Kuching. Now, what does that mean? Meaning, uh, uh, you don't have it, it shouldn't be too in your face. Yeah, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So let's say in your 30 minutes commercial, yeah. You can speak the national language or whatever, but if you have 10 seconds of a little bit of that element, I can relate to it. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a, 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 a different, different version for everything. So a little bit of tweaking in certain, certain parts of that messaging. So I think we have to be very clever about this. And uh, uh, what you need now is a great writer who understands well, who looks at the data to craft the storyline. That's the most important uh, thing for any advertisers to actually uh, do that. And, uh, and working together with, with an existing brand that people uh, align with. Yeah. Understand, so Dexter. Can I, can oh, I, can sorry, I, Hafiz, wanna... um, Just add on to uh, Jamie's point, right? Um, um, you don't have to be so ambitious and worried that you're gonna burst your marketing budget. And first and foremost, uh, me, uh, the media in East Malaysia is not so expensive comparing <laughs> to West Malaysia. Do not assume again, okay? We are only a fraction of what it cost back in KL. I, I, feel, I feel like, yeah. I feel like, uh, I sebagai tuan rumah menjemput tetamu, tetapi sekarang tetamu menembak tuan rumah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in terms of cost, I don't think it should be a worry. And then in terms of execution, right? You don't have to like, uh, use all the, the languages, the dayak language, Iban lah, Bidayu. I think, just by starting with using Bahasa Sarawak, using Bahasa Sabah will make a lot of difference already. Huge difference already. Yeah. And then the other thing is, right, you can always ask help from the media owners in East Malaysia. I tell you, we are far more flexible, far more helpful. We are, we are more than uh, willing to do this because we are so passionate about the market. We, we, we so want to educate the people that really take this market for granted and explain to them further about the kind of potential and the kind of mistakes that they've been doing all this while. So, yeah. Faham? Understood, understood. Dexter, you want to add to that? I want to go to Nizam after this, but uh, different, different, uh, different subjects. Kejap, eh? Hold on, Nizam. Dexter, you want to, you want to add on to what uh, Sohaimi and uh, Hafiz have said? Okay. Um, I have to agree with Hafiz that of course, if you compare West Malaysian advertising budget, it's of course, when you engage with media companies, East Malaysia is very much cheaper and you can even reach a better audience, you know? So I don't think it's about bursting the advertising budget. I think that's a small issue. I think that companies should really start with one story and that will really connect to the rest. Because Sabah Hans, we are all um, friends with each other, different cultures. Malays, Karazans, Chinese, we all meet together all the time to celebrate each other's festivals. Hari Raya, Chinese people come to Malay people's house, you know? Um, Karazans, you know, we celebrate all together our cultural festivals. So just sending one message is enough to reach all the different cultures and different races in Sabah. I mean, from our experience. Of course, awesome. this, yes, yeah, so that um, the solution to all this is to basically work closely with market leaders, you know, and East Malaysians. So like for us, for existence, for instance, you know, we, customers will come to us and tell us, how do we tell this story? You know, and we will give them um, the best way that is suitable to reach the local audience. You know, Sabah Hans will always strongly support their local talents, their local media companies, you know, who have been around all the time. You know, Sabah Hans will always see um, the bigger picture you know, they won't support a company that is, um, I should put it this way. 
if they know this company is Saba owned, they will always support, you know, they always have this hashtag support local, <laughs> you know, and it, it works for us as well, you know, because we have been doing this for 60 years. We know the right stories to tell for the locals, you know, and that is why a lot of West Malaysian advertisers are still coming back to us. It's because mm. we know what our readers like to read, basically, and why just one campaign can suit the entire market here. Actually, I feel you don't that have to. Yeah, I feel that the, the, the condensed version of what you're trying to say over here and the same points being replicated by Hafiz and Suhaimi is that step number one, speak to people who are operating in East Malaysia because the solution is with them. Yes. Right, 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 mm -hmm. right. Okay. Um, Nizam, um, I, I've got two questions for you and they are, you know, I have to... Um, uh, apologize here, here because these are rather loaded questions and I'm going to compound two questions into one. I've got a, a couple of interesting points over here. Number one, we were talking about localization over here. Now, localization versus globalization. I want to read something that was written uh, and published in um, PwC in February of this year. Localization may not be with us to stay as countries focus uh, on promoting economic growth right, or in this case regions they will likely return to globalization as a path to prosperity. So, in other words, question number one would be, is it even worth looking into talking to the smaller groups of the market when you can cast a wider net and speak to the nation in general? This is basically, I'm digressing, going back a step and really asking the, 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 the preliminary question last year, which is, do we want to even go into localization? Is it worth going in? Because, and here's compounded question number two, I want to uh, bring up some figures over here. So if you're looking at the mean household consumption, uh, and these are data from 2014, I know it's a little bit lambat, but then it's still quite relevant, where the national average is 3,578 ringgit per household. In Sabah and Sarawak, they score very, very low at 2,826 ringgit in Sarawak and 2,355 the lowest in Sabah in terms of mean household consumption. So for a company such as Bank Rakyat, is it even worth going into a market which may not offer, and I'm saying this with a huge ladle of salt over here, may not offer as much as Semenanjung? What are your thoughts on that? Okay, um, first things first, I think Tadi, uh, earlier Hafiz and also Dexter uh, did, did mention that you don't have to burst your budget to actually hit out at Sabah and Sarawak. Um, I think for, for, for the bank, how we work is that we'd always depend on our media partners to help recommend to us work on campaigns together and stuff like that. I haven't had a chance to work with Chetmi yet, but I'm sure it's going to come soon. Uh, but working with Hafiz and also Dexter, I think it's already there. Um, and, and, and I agree, the, 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 the costing is not as high as, as, as in Semenanjo. Now, going to your question, uh, looking at um, localization versus globalization. And now I think, um, first, we need to understand, my, from, from where I sit, we are a Malaysian bank and we have operations throughout the country. Now, um, you can't expect to throw a net and just uh, hope to get whatever you get, you know. Um, mm. For us, I think we look at campaigns, we look at how we do things differently across um, uh, Satu, you have your, your, your major campaigns which hit out uh, throughout the country. But secondly, we have pockets of smaller campaigns going out to all these local um, states, whether you call it states, whether it's towns or even cities. But also Sabasawa and how we look at the different ethnics, we look at them differently in terms of how we market. Um, so that's why I go back to how we are represented um, at the States in Sabah and Sarawak. We have local people talking to um, the, the same language as the local people over there, which um, first things first gets you already into their good books, lah, you know, when you speak the same language. Sending someone from, from Semenanjung to speak there is, is going to be a, it's going to be slightly more difficult. So that's one. I think um, how we also look at our, our, our audiences, um, we cater campaigns, we, can, we, we cater uh, promotions uh, strictly towards the areas. So, for example, Kalau, we look at how uh, our CSR campaign was uh, previously on, on autistic kids. We target different autistic kids and we do different things based on needs for that one. Of course, you, you look at it and you say, oh, you, you, you guys are probably going to burst your marketing budget. But no, I think with the partners that we have, we, we've been able to do that over the longest period of time. Now, mm. your second question goes, and, and we talk about household income, right? Now, 
Um, this is where we go back to the unserved and underserved. Are we saying that if these two states um, with, with, with very low household income, do we not look at them? We can't say that, right? So that's why I think being the bank of the people, we, uh, we take a little bit more initiative to meet um, the needs and wants of people outside of Sunanjung, Sabah, Sarawak, especially the ones young um, don't have any banking facilities, no banks nearby. That's why we have our bank bergerak going into these villages and assisting them in opening account, whether it's financing, blah, blah, blah. For SMEs, we also have, uh, we've just set up um, SME centers, also Sabah and Sarawak, to cater for SMEs in Sabah and Sarawak. Mm -hmm. Because if, if, if you say, uh, you know, the income's low, the, 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 the spending power is not as much as in Sunanjung, do we not look at them? You know, as like I said, bank for the people, bank like, yeah, we need to be there and we need to be able to give them um, access to banking, to funds, uh, you know, to whatever banking products out there. Right, right. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so we've got um, well, my dear panelists, we've got a lot of questions that are coming in. Um, I can see in the chat room and then also there were a couple of questions that are sent specifically for uh, for panelists. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and, 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 and try and get one of this. So the first one is coming from uh, Mahin. We'd like to know how much people are open to technology and using it for day-to-day -day transaction. For example, booking, e-hailing, purchasing groceries, and so on. Um, I think this is really, really interesting uh, because we are talking about two regions where you have Sarawak Bay and Sabah Bay. You know? We don't even have that here in Semenanjung. So they are very open to technology. Correct me if I'm wrong, panelists. Oh. Uh, maybe uh, Dexter can take for Sabah and uh, uh, Hafiz can take for Sarawak. Okay, I'll answer this question first. Um, prior, prior to pandemic, uh, my last visit to KL was uh, in uh, August last year. Went to one of the very, very popular mall in KL, Dalam Bukit Bintang. Went downstairs to the food court and wanted to buy, have lunch. Yeah? I was so shocked, right? I was so surprised, right? There's no e-wallet there. Okay? <laughs> and because, and, and why I say that? Because I am so accustomed to using um, e-wallets in, in Sarawak and Sabah. Wherever you go, stalls, shopping malls, grocery, even to the, to the market. You go pasar beli ikan, beli sayur, you can, you can already use your e-wallet. Okay? In Sarawak specifically, right? Um, uh, Sarawak Pay is widely used, yeah? widely, even Boost for that matter. The, the penetration in East Malaysia is higher than West Malaysia, I can confirm that. So in terms of usage of technology for, for, from the people uh, here in East Malaysia, I have zero doubts. Okay? Perhaps they are probably more uh, equipped, okay? because I'll give you an example. There are certain items that, that is not so accessible here. Okay, in terms of shopping, what do they do? They go online and shop. They probably shop more than the people in East Malaysia. So you don't have to worry. They don't live on trees and kena panjat pokok ke apa baru nak dapat line. No, no, no. That's, it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. <laughs> Dexter, you want to take on for Sabah? Okay. Well, yes. I mean, the... With Sabah Pay, Sarawak Pay, of course, we can see that East Malaysians and technology actually, it is really growing. You know, people are really starting to learn how to um, adapt with, the, especially with the pandemic. It forces everyone to change, you know, from businesses to everyday lifestyles, you know, everyone is turning into the web, which is why like the press, for example, a, a lot of, it, this is our highest ever readership ever, you know, and this comes in hand with, of course, how people spend and everything, like Shopee. Shopee is one of our clients also. And they helped, we helped to reach, help them to reach the locals to tell them that, you know, because now online shopping is super competitive, mm -hmm. you know, as, as you all know. And Shopee understands this, and which is why they engage with us to make sure that um, we really reach the audience. And if, you know, they even they understand that Sabahans have a huge spending power. You know, which is why they are spending quite a lot on campaigns to reach this audience. Understood. Okay, so uh, you've mentioned Shopee. So that is still an entity that is operating on a, uh, on a blanket scale. Uh. But the next question is related to that. It's coming from Dr. Uh, Venkateshwaran Balakrishnan. Is there any special, or rather, are there any special 
online platforms which we can market our products in Sabah and Sarawak particularly. Perhaps, um, yeah, do we have any? Uh, perhaps uh, Dexter can take this first and then maybe Nizam, if you have any insights on this, you can share with us. Okay, um, so uh, I'll start. Huh? Of course, we, we clients can of course approach us as well. I mean, yeah, we're doing the press, but our online presence is growing very much, you know. Our readership is the highest it's ever been, record highs, you know. And our paper, uh, our news website, is actually the most read website in Sabah. So this is something that KL clients do know. And of course, that's why they're still engaging us to tell web stories to web banners, you know, and videos, of course. And social media, this is a new trend, you know. And of course, we are growing rapidly as well in this area. And the big difference is that most of our audience is Sabahans, actually, you know, from different cultures and different um, races as well. Thank you. Uh, Nizam, you want to... You wanna, um... Uh, add on to that? Yeah, so I think, yeah, when we talk about technology in Sabah and Sarawak, I think it's something that uh, that is growing and has also reached a, a, a stage where, um, you know, it's the, the numbers that are showing are really, really good. Um, back in 2019, uh, Bank Raya, we launched a project called PINK, Project Integrity Kewangan Masjid. And this is to enable one for the mosque to be able to manage their finances better, also for people to um, to donate. Uh, you know, through, through Sarawak Pay. And I think the numbers over the last two years has seen tremendous growth, you know. So I think um, uh, on, on, on this note, I think technology in Sabah and Sarawak is, is, is on the way up, you know. It's, it's, it's showing very good numbers and uh, we are trying to do more projects like this with Sabah as well. Thank you, thank you, uh, Nizam. Uh, next question, uh, I think this one is definitely for Chek Mila, Chek Me. Um, can I know the effectiveness, this was sent anonymously, can I know the effectiveness of TV in marketing nowadays? Most people tend to not watch TV. Chek Me. Okay, I uh, disagree with, with, with the statement because right now, you can actually look at the viewership numbers. We have captive audience. What else do you do in your house when you're under MCO? Yeah, people are actually watching TV. So that's- Now it's the best time you're saying. Yes, now best, it's the best, best time. That's the best time. Please come in now. And I think some of the comments, for example, um, talking about, uh, is that a ready-made platform? Yeah. Is everything ready? If we go, what's the guarantee that we will not fail? Okay. I am a firm believer of first mover advantage you go first before the clutter sets in you know and uh, uh, why i'm uh, very uh, gung-ho about Sarawak is the next capital of indonesia will be in kalimantan people that is just the neighbor so you <laughs> have to start somewhere you grow the market together with us so it is not about always you know uh, something is ready therefore i go you know so you build together because when you look at the numbers, the numbers are growing very, very fast. Yeah, uh, viewership, engagement numbers, yeah, uh, be it television, be it online. But nowadays, we don't see it as whether it's television or whether it's online, whether it's print. It's basically how the content moves from one platform to another. It's back to that compelling content, yeah. Some content will do well uh, uh, on whatever platform, so be it on television, been on online because uh, I give an example. This one I had to give it to people in Sabah. Okay, we have this program called TV Stars. Okay, TV Stars. So uh, it's basically singing competition where we have uh, it's it's done online because we can't get people in one place. So we have contestants from the Philippines, from uh, from uh, Indonesia, from uh, Peninsular Malaysia, from Sarawak, of course, and from Sabah. And guess what? I think there's something right about people in Sabah. So there's this guy. His name is Fanzi Ruji. Okay. And when Fanzi sings, boom, uh, you know, uh, suddenly uh, we call it, oh, the avocados is coming. So they're actually going in and supporting uh, Fanzi. So what does that mean? That means that if that person is seen as a local hero, use him or her <laughs> for your advertising list. And actually it worked for us. And suddenly, so we were trying to say, should we boost uh, this content on Facebook? And suddenly it came from Sabah, you know, and we were trying to go to the Indonesian market uh, tried to, oh, because Indonesia has 160 million audience, but then it came from Sabah. So this mm. is how it works, yeah? 
Uh, so, Jamie, sure, yeah. Jamie. I not, I not, uh, I not compound. You got another question because another sure. person has asked this. Uh, Lao Wei Ming has said a lot of marketers question the effectiveness of TV and newspaper hard copy because most of the people now move on to social media. I get it. I get it. Social media is the current thing, but you are saying that there is a captive audience. From your perspective, Jamie, how do we create? An amalgamized strategy, okay. a hybrid strategy between. Wonderful, the two. wonderful! Wow, you know you're very clever. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know it, it is not about whether you are TV or you are radio or you are social media or you are print. You know, today the conversation is seamless. You watch me on TV. I give an example. I have a program on television, 30 minutes. Because of your attention span, you can only maybe focus about five minutes or 10 minutes. Yeah. So we we will milk some of the content in case you miss it. You can have this two-minuter. So we we put that on TV and we put it online and we engage in that conversation. So for us, sooner or later, we can actually monetize that. So brands can actually come in because people just want to hear this. They don't want to see the thirty minutes. So it is no longer uh, advertising just on one platform. It's basically content-based. How you make that content move from TV to online to whatever it is. So that's mm. how things move today. You don't silo it anymore. So that is mm. why, for example. Uh, Uh, you, you you see print, you know why is the print media going online and then they are going video because that's the way to do. That's how you should do it because uh, your audience want to be represented. Your the brands that will be paying for their brands to appear on your platform wants to be known here, 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 and here. So it's an amalgamation like like you mentioned. So in the whatever that we we propose to you, you get this, you get this, you get this, you get this, and then it's like I like that. Okay, I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. <laughs> so it's like that. It's like going to a restaurant. Uh -huh. Now I think also people and this is you know I I like to contribute this um people also forget that different slices of the market resides on different platforms so for example Dexter um correct me if I'm wrong but then from what I understand um the newspaper audience um if in especially if you're talking about the hard copy audience over here they still command a very strong um attention. From the community, the the more affluent community, the older, more money community. For example, correct me if I'm wrong over there. So if you are going into the market with a product that requires a higher investment, such as property or um or luxury products, luxury items, there is still some traction to be gained from advertising on newspapers, be it online and hard copy. What do you think? Yes, actually, you are right. You know, um, even with the, I think that's one of the good things about the pandemic uh, that there's a lot of fake news and fake SOPs, fake announcements from spread online and on social media. You know, even with government logos, you know, these people, I have no idea why they want to go into all that trouble for what. You know, and that actually helps our paper. You know, people read it. You know, because we verify. All the SOPs first, you know, with government officials, you know, and even on our online platforms, we make sure that is this believable? You know, we have to really take the time to check with officials, you know, so that we are not spreading fake news, you know. And this is what our clients understand as well, um, and which many West Malaysian papers who have came here and tried to penetrate the market have actually failed and stopped distribution already. I mean, mm. you know, because they don't understand the local audience, you know. They don't contribute to local community development. You know, it's different from what applies in West does not necessarily apply here. Understood. You know? mm. True. True. Okay. So we've only got one, about one minute left. Uh, we've actually gone over by 10 minutes. Um, there are so many questions that were coming in. Uh, but before we wrap up, I just want to flash the two last things over here. Uh, one is actually a comment from Lisa Sabrina Ambrose for the very first time. Era and hit Sabah. Represented Kamatan as official media and broadcast partner in a big way this year. I know because for the first time I could actually watch Undok Ngadau on um, uh, on hits uh, uh, social media, and I could watch it from here and get it was amazing. Mix FM National Radio played the Dusun language Kamatan theme song for the very first time. This is a huge breakthrough for all. Well done, Astro. So. I just wanted to share. This is a feel-good factor that you know things are moving in the right direction. So kudos to uh, Hafiz and team over there. Uh, but last but definitely not least over here, uh, this is a quick fire question for all the panelists. To all panelists, what <laughs> I love this question. What is the best method to catch the attention of East Malaysian consumers quickly? 
So this is the first thing that you should be doing if you are a business owner. It doesn't matter if you're a big business owner or you are an SME entrepreneur. What is the number one thing that you need to do quickly? Quick fire. Go. Uh, we start with um, Hafiz and then we go with um, uh, Dexter, then Chaimi and definitely uh, ultimately Nizam lah, because Nizam is the client over here, right? So we want to go there. So Hafiz, go for it. I don't know what, how quick is quick, lah, right? But I think the key word here is relationship. Okay, It's like you, you want to impress your girlfriend or maybe like you, even being married, lah, right? You need to bersabar, you need to persevere, you need to, you know, sometimes you need to agree to disagree, right? So when you have that relationship, you build your credibility, you build your trust with your consumers and your audience. I think a quick win is you need to have that relationship and you need to respect the people. Okay, you need to acknowledge them. Then you have it. I feel that um, Dalam Hafiz punya very well-crafted business proposition answer ni, there is also truth in his personal life because I understand you're probably married to a local, right? And I'm pretty sure you have your blue passport with you somewhere. Right yes, now. yes, yes, I do. I do. Actually, <laughs> I brought it with me, see? <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> so congratulations on that. Um, okay, thank you, Hafiz. Uh, Dexter, see you. Quick win. Okay, I think just to make this very quickly, um, you really have to push um, and engage with local um, local people, you know, the local audience to build this sort of relationship with us. Um, so that way, people really trust your, your brand and your products, you know. Like, like for our paper, for instance, if you ask any of the locals, you know, anyone who advertise on our paper, they know that Oh, actually, Daily Express is endorsing this company. You know, it is sort of like a trademark. You know, that Daily Express believes in this company. You know, that um, what they are doing is really beneficial and uh, the right way for the locals because we we are actually very expensive in East Malaysian market. You know, but clients from KL still come in with us. You know, because they know that it's worth to invest with us because that trademark issue. You know. And locals through our newspaper, through our online platforms, when they see the KL or you know West Malaysian companies with us, you know we telling their stories, you know they believe that we have done our homework on them, you know, and they are really serious on pushing into the Sabah market to touch and engage with the locals. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Dexter. Jamie, your quick win. Okay, my quick win will be now we are all under MCO. You have a captured audience at home. Please be the first mover advantage. Yeah, avoid the clutter. You go in now, and then you go for representation and be relatable. Next, we are relevant. <laughs> yeah, we are real and reach for the skies. This is basically what we do, and we are an inspiring brand. All brands are inspiring, so you can actually work today with us, and we work based on respect. That's very very fast because now is the captured audience time because they are all at home <laughs> waiting. Uh, for, for you to, to just get your message to them. That's it. Thank you, Chikmi. And uh, Nizam, you're the client over here, so we really want to hear what was your quick win when you entered um, your marketing messages into the Sabah Sarawak market. You're muted, uh, Nizam, by the way. Sorry. Okay, so um, I think what Hafiz mentioned is, is really quite quite their uh, relationship. It's it's key for us. I mean, um, of course, we we... We, we got to send out messages. We got to launch new products. Sometimes uh, it's faster than we even imagine. Um, I think the relationship that, that, that the bank has with our media partners, for example, radio, where you talk about the social media partners, the, 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 the news outlets, uh, it's radio and social media that really works for us really, really quickly. Um, quick win-wise, um, you know, I think the relationship that, that we have uh, with Astro Radio, for example, in Sabah and Sarawak, um, we're just able to pick up the phone and, and run some messages. Um, vice versa, Astro Radio over there as well, new campaigns, they will just call us and you know uh, share with us ideas and such. So I think for us, from, from client point of view, uh, spot on relationship is key for us. Fantastic, Nizam, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so before we wrap up right now, I understand that, you know, as a thank you to um, our wonderful attendees today, they asked a lot of questions and you've got so many questions still coming in. So I apologize, we cannot take all the questions now, but you can reach out to the panelists uh, with your questions if you want to. Check me, dah tunjuk dah dekat situ, sohaimi at smg.my. But um, if you go ahead, um, if the panelists can go ahead and type your email address in the chat box, uh, then you know everybody can can ask the questions that they have. But before we go, um, Hafiz, uh, that, to say thank you, we have a special package that you've put together for our attendees today, right? So you want to share with us? There we go. 
You're muted, by the way, Hafiz, yeah? All right. Um, just a quick one. We, we, we are doing a bundle package with TVS, okay? Um, a basic talk show segment sponsorship. Together with, you can pick either one of our stations, ERA, MAI, or HITS, for an influencer live review package. Combine TVS and, uh, this is just one package. Of course, we have loads and loads of packages that we have out there. But for this introduction, we have it at 6,900 ringgit. Yeah? And bearing in mind, um, like our product, Era Mind Hits, we also have very, very successful, strong uh, social media platforms, all spearheaded by the local team. I am the only West Malaysian, but now I'm also half East Malaysian. Lah. Okay? <laughs> our local announcers are, are all celebrities. They have strong followings. Our stations are all very, very strong, very, very well, uh, well received within the local Sabah and Sarawak. Reach out to us. Okay, we'll be able to tailor make your campaign better. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Hafiz. Okay, that's it. That's all oh, the time Dexter. that we have. We've actually Do you know, I think about... Dexter has a has a package as well. Oh, I see, I see, yeah, yeah. Dexter. Okay, yeah. over to you now, then Dexter. I thought it was rolled into one. Oh, I didn't see that. There, sorry. Okay, no problem. Just one second, huh? Oh. So that's Sarawak cow team by uh by half face over there uh and sabah but now we've got daily express over here go for it okay uh can you all see the slide huh? mm -hmm. yes we can okay so basically to put um very quickly um why you should engage with sabah media just like daily express it's because um and i have here a special package of course this is a value of more than 20 000, 30 000 ringgit and we have countless packages. Of course, we always tailor made for certain clients, you know, on the certain um, story that you wish to tell. And this is just one example, you know, we package newspaper, um, website advertisements and stories, you know, web and print story for the locals, you know. This example, as you can see here, we did for our client, uh, Ibis KLCC, which Sabahans who fly to KL actually look for a place to stay. And we help to mm -hmm. tell the story to let the locals know that if you're going to care for quarantine, you know, you can come to this hotel. It's just one of the many case studies that we do. I see, I see. Well, I'm loving the price that I can see over there. Uh, it's very true what you guys mentioned earlier that, you know, it is very cost effective. In fact, it costs from the packages I can see, it even costs a lot less compared to some celebrity influencers over here in Sumananjo. So yeah, definitely bang for the buck over here. Okay. Uh, to my wonderful panelists, thank you so much. Thank you to Hafiz, thank you to Nizam, thank you to Dexter, and definitely thank you to uh, Chaimi Shami Sulaiman uh, for joining us today. I hope you guys have um, gained as much as I have. It is a wonderful session that we just had. Um, and in case you missed it and you want to refer back to this, uh, we will be putting this session back up um, on um, link.astronomy.com uh, playback. Um, just give us a couple of hours to you know tidy things up and we'll put it up and you can always refer back to that um, if you have further questions you can go ahead and ask the panelists um, i'm sure they've already put their email addresses uh, in the chat box so you can go ahead uh, and email them your questions if you enjoyed this session please go ahead right after the session um, the moment we end the event, there is going to be a short survey that asks you to rate us. Uh, do rate us five stars if you enjoy the session because your ratings means it's fuel for us to do even more sessions such as this. And also reach out to us and tell us what you want to talk about, what you want to listen to. Uh, and we will go ahead and arrange the sessions uh, specifically for you right here at Astro Awani Link. My name is Zin Omar. Thank you once again to all my panelists. And thank we hope to me. see you again soon. Thank you, Chetni. Thank you, Nizam. Thank you. Uh, Dexter and uh, thank you Hafiz we'll see you thank again you. soon bye bye thank, thank you, you everyone thank you thank you Shoot.